Hello, I'm Stefan, and welcome back to another episode of Japan at War. Naval Commander Yi Sun Shin spent close to three weeks as home port at Yusu after the Battle of Akpo, repairing the siding of his ships, resting the men, and also preparing to set out again against the Japanese. On July 8th, he set out again and met with Wang Kyun at Noryang Bay and combined their fleets again. Well, Wan added a couple of ships, but still. From there, they headed towards the port of Sachion, which was pretty close to the Chala border, where Japanese warships had arrived. Yi Sun Shin and Wang Kyun arrived at Sachion later that day and found 400 Japanese soldiers taking fortified positions on a rocky hill near the port with banners stretched across around three kilometers on the coast. There was a good number of ships with their anchors in the water, including 12 larger multi-tiered ships. Yi Sun Shin made the decision that it wouldn't be smart to get close to attack as it would expose his men to gunfire and would also risk his ships running aground with the tide. See, he wanted the, the enemy on water, where he felt they would have the advantage. With all this in mind, he came up with this strategy. He would send 23 of his 26 ships, making sure to leave behind his turtle ship on a slow approach into the bay. He did this with the expectation that they would get overconfident at the sight of a small force. And he was right. More than half of the Japanese ran back to their ships, boarded them, and then went after the Korean ships, now in full retreat, exactly as Yi Shun Shin had hoped. Soon they were right there in the middle of the bay. With that, Yi had his newest ship, the turtle ship, captained by Na Taeyong, lead the way for his forces. The Koreans now not only outclassed the Japanese vessels, but they also outnumbered them too. The Japanese panicked, which caused them to just stay there instead of fully retreating. Soon, the Korean ships were tearing apart the lighter-hulled Japanese. They did try to fight back, but their matchlocks didn't do much against the thick wood of the Korean ships. The Japanese commander yelled at his men to get it together, board them, and show them your might. They apparently were able to draw in one of the ships with grappling hooks, but were forced to retreat back to their ship under heavy arrow fire. The Japanese that had remained on shore soon began firing their matchlocks at the Korean ships. In an attempt to aid their comrades, when Yi Sun Sin looked in the direction of the gunfire, he could actually see several Koreans in their native clothes assisting the Japanese. This severely angered the man, and in a fit of rage, he ordered his oarmen to row near shore, and then ordered all his cannons to open fire on them. The cannon fire did eventually start to drive the enemy from the hill, but it had also put him and his flagship in range of the matchlocks. He was even shot in his left shoulder and caused him to almost bleed out. He concealed the wound by soaking up the blood with the padding of his armor. See, he could not allow his men to see 
or they might lose their nerve. There were several others that also were wounded from this fight, including the captain and builder of the turtle ship, Na Taeyong. After Yi is said to have dug the bullet out with a dagger and then sealed the wound shut using the flame of a candle. I don't really buy this though, as Yi's account of the battle says that the bullet passed straight through his shoulder and out the back. This is also mentioned in the book The Imjin War. I also have a hard time believing no one died from this engagement, but I, I honestly can't prove otherwise. With the day nearly done and all the large Japanese ships destroyed, Yi Sun Sin withdrew his larger ships into the open sea, but made the calculated decision to leave some of the smaller enemy vessels intact. He hoped that this would lure the Japanese that had escaped into coming back out, where he could then, once again, close in and then completely destroy them. He wouldn't get that chance though, as another opportunity presented itself. The next morning on July 9th, one of his scout ships reported that a squadron of Japanese ships was sighted east at the harbor of Dangpo. Without even a thought, Yi gave the order to head there and arrived right before noon. They found 21 enemy ships at anchor. Nine of them seemed to be as large as their own Pinoxian ships, and one of them was decorated in a way that made Yi and his men suspect that this was their flagship. When they could finally get a better look at the ship, they saw a man standing underneath the pavilion on the deck. He was described by the Koreans as having no expression. The man was Kurashima Michizuki, one of the daimyo leading the advance party of the Japanese Navy. With him was around 700 soldiers plus the crews for the ships. Again, the turtle ship was the one to lead the way, its cannons firing at every ship it passed. One of these Pinoxian ships actually closed in on Kurushima's flagship after releasing a full broadside with their cannons. The Koreans loosed a volley of arrows onto the deck of the ship and one of these arrows struck Michiyuki in the brow of his helmet, stunning the man. Then a second arrow is said to have struck him in the upper chest, sending him crashing down off the pavilion. Before the man could recover, one of Yi's officers, Quan Jun, jumped onto the enemy ship and said to have cut his head off. The rest of the Japanese beached their ships and then ran into the hills, leaving the Koreans to burn their ships down. After the destruction of the Japanese fleet at Dangpo, Yi Sun Sin and Wan Kyun spent the next two days going over Koje Island and the west coast of the mainland looking for more enemy ships. They didn't find any. Then, on July the 12th, Chola Wright Navy Commander Yi Ki, with 25 large warships, caught up to Yi Sun Sin and combined their fleets. So now, the fleet was 51 large warships. Then a scout ship reported in. There's enemy ships at Tang Hang Po. Tang Hang Po was a bit of a problem though. It was a narrow inlet 10 kilometers from the open sea. 
and could really bottleneck Yi's forces. All three naval commanders, Yi Sun Sin, Wan Kyun, and Yi Ok, decided to approach with caution. It was decided that they should send a scout on land first to find out if the bay was wide enough to even maneuver in. The scout came back and confirmed that it actually was. Yi then sent a small group of ships ahead to locate the enemy ships. When they were found, signal arrows went up, signaling to the other ships to make their way in. Both Yi Sun Sin and Yi Ok advanced as fast as they could. They found 26 enemy ships anchored at Tang Heng Po, 13 small, 14 medium, and 8 large Pinocchan sized vessels, and one really large ship. All of them were painted black, except the larger vessel that was painted with red bits of white and blue, and a skirt made of black cloth, which looked very much like a Buddhist shrine. Four of the ships had large banners saying, Glory to the Holy Lotus, an incantation of the Nichiren Buddhist sect. The size of the bay prevented the Koreans from forming their typical straight battle line. So, instead, they arranged themselves in a circle. Just as he had done before, Yi sent out his turtle ship to disrupt the Japanese, who had already started to form a defensive line of their own in front of their flagship. The turtle ship slammed into the enemy ships, bouncing off of them and firing its cannons. Meanwhile, the Pinoxan battleships took turns sweeping in, letting loose their cannons and fire arrows. The battle was actually going very well for the Koreans, but then Yi Sun Sin saw something that caused him to worry. The Japanese were starting to be defensive. Yi feared that they would head to shore and leave their ships as pretty much all the other Japanese that he had faced had done before. So he had his men fake a retreat, hoping that the Japanese would try to pursue them. And they did. The commander of the Japanese, Mori Moroharu, gave the signal to chase after them. Then, the second they were out in the open sea, Yi gave the signal and all the Pinoxan battleships encircled the Japanese ships. With the turtles ramming any ship that got close. And they really did make the enemy panic. The large flagship took on the most cannon fire and Li Sun, a captain in Yi Sun Shin's navy, is said to have wrote this about the large craft's commander. The enemy commander was a young man in fine armor and held high a long sword and fought to the last without fear as he directed his men. I shot at him with all my might, but it was not until he had been shot through and through with ten arrows that he shouted a war cry loudly and fell dead. His remaining warriors were also shot, and they too died. All the ships were destroyed, and on July 18th, with no other fleet spotted, the fleet was dissolved and the three naval commanders went back to their home ports. And this is where, we, where this episode will end. Victory upon victory. And yet Yi had almost let his emotions overtake him and almost died because of it. We will see if this plays a part of his decision making in the future. See you next episode.